Welcome to another episode of Tech Lounge, a podcast where we discuss the ever-changing world of technology. <laughs> and now your host, Dan Duran. All right, all right, all right, all right. Hello, everybody. My name is Dan Duran, and I'm the host of the Tech Lounge. Here we discuss business, uh, I mean, topics related to business, leadership, technology, and cybersecurity. Welcome, everyone, to the show. Episode 13, Password wow. Management with LastPass. Log me in. Just remember, we stream live on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube every Friday at 12 p.m., and we're also on podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and Podbean. So please, make sure you follow us using the hashtag Dan Duran and watch us live every, every Friday. Now sit back and relax. This is the Tech Lounge. Woohoo! <laughs> Well, we have a great show for you today, and it's a very interesting one. Um, we'll be talking about your crappy passwords, basically. Yes, and what you can do about it. So today in our virtual studio, we have a great guest, Mike Eisenhuth, channel manager at LastPass. Hello, Mike. To to welcome to the show. Hey guys, uh, thanks for having me. You know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to talking about what I talk about every day and that's uh, how bad people, uh, you know, create passwords and like to use them on every single application website that they have. So looking forward to it. <laughs> yes, beautiful. <laughs> it's going to be fun. And of course, here with me, I have my co-host extraordinaire, superstar, superstar, <laughs> the man himself, Andrew Summerton, CEO of Rhino Cybersecurity. Make sure you visit our website, rhino.io. Hello, Andrew. How are you? I'm good, Dan. Always great to be here, as always. Mike, so happy you're here. Looking forward to the to the show today and getting all your insight. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So, Andrew, what's the backstory for today? Yeah. So, I mean, this is kind of exciting because as as you guys all know, everybody watching, it's about you. And and as Dan alluded to, and so did Mike, um, password is is it's crazy because everybody gets lost, confused, etc. So, LastPass is our actual password management partners that we work with um, directly with our clients to give them that layer of security protection and everything else. So uh, we're very proud as a company at Rhino Cybersecurity to be affiliated with an organization like LastPass uh, because the depth of their uh, experience, their professionalism and their, their service is just second to none. So uh, Mike, again, absolute pleasure to have you here and we're yes, just you know, we're thrilled to share your insight and your company's insight with our, our audience. Yes, absolutely. And and what's uh what's the status of of it on our channels, uh, Andrew? Yeah, I'm just I'm looking through uh, different people. Just a couple of people. It's the beginning of the show. Always the same thing. Uh, uh, Adrian says, uh, "Hey everybody, or hey uh, hey hey guys, um, Kevin, hello." So a lot of a lot of love out there at the beginning, as always. Uh, Adrian, it's good to see you guys. Good to see you too, Diego. Hello guys. Um, Let's see there's a few more popping up. Gabriella, hello. So everybody's really excited to, to you know hear what we have to say, hear what Mike has to say, most importantly. Tamara, hi guys, looking forward to the show. Uh, Alexis, hi. So lots of lots of love out there. So thanks so much, guys, for joining us. Really, really happy. Boris, hello. Um, so guys, we're gonna be we're gonna be uh, fielding all of your questions, of course, through the entire show. We have some yes. questions of our own that are very pertinent to obviously the industry, to individuals, which Mike will answer. But most importantly, the show is about LastPass and you, our audience. So please ask any questions we can, and we'll try to field them all if we possibly if we possibly can throughout the, the duration all right. of the show. Perfect. Let's dive in. So, Mike, tell us about yourself, your hobbies, your passion. What do you do in Pennsylvania? You're from Pennsylvania, right? That's right. I am located, uh, we'll call it about 30 minutes north of Pittsburgh, PA, which is in the western side of the state. Um, nice. So I know most of the audience here is most likely in Canada. Um, nice to meet everybody. I've been, to, I've been to Canada once in my life, and it was Niagara Falls, and that's probably like the worst iteration of Canada. Dad's going, Dad's going there. <laughs> Dad's going there this weekend, actually. So, but we do have yeah. we do have a lot of uh, people from the U.S. actually coming on our show. As well, awesome, so. awesome. Yeah. I know you know yeah. you know Canadians. As Canadians, we do things backwards. So uh, we have Thanksgiving coming up, right? Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah, this yeah. Weekend. Happy Thanksgiving yeah. to everybody. Yes, yes. We'll, yeah, we'll be thanks. celebrating in about another six weeks. 
weeks from now. But uh, regardless, happy Thanksgiving. So, Dan, what do I do in my own personal time? Well, I'll be honest with you. I have two young kids. Um, so I am very well indoctrinated in being the sports coach for everything they do. Nice, so nice. on the rare occasion, I'm not coaching baseball or whatever the case might be. If I have a couple hours, you'll find me on the golf course. That's the that's the one thing I really do enjoy in life is getting out, uh, escaping the world for about four hours and playing golf. Nice. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I'm a fan of uh, baseball, but not so much uh, golf for sure. So tell us a little bit about your role at LastPass. Like in a few sentences, what makes LastPass special? Yeah, so LastPass is one of the first password managers that was ever, uh, you know, on the on the come to market and um ultimately this this came out about 2010 so you know sure enough it's been about a decade already that LastPass and password managers have really been around and yeah. you know what i do with LastPass is i work in a very specific channel and, and that channel is managed service providers so for everyone that's on the call that's like a small to medium-sized business that doesn't have an internal it support staff you are most likely outsourcing that to what we call an msp and msps yes. are the ones that are doing the, all the behind the scenes work um, so i'm ultimately working with these uh, msp partners such as rhino like yourself uh, and then ultimately we want to push implementation to the smb world because um, I don't know if you know how vulnerable SMBs are, but you know, 40% of cyber attacks mm. are targeted towards SMBs. Right. And why is that, Dan? Because SMBs don't have the infrastructure that enterprise exactly. companies have. So yeah, that's the the main thing is, you know, let's let's push security and it's cybersecurity awareness month. I want to add that too. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Cool little timing on that. But yes, uh, at the end of the day, what's my job is to get LastPass uh, using it in every and all situation possible. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned it's Cybersecurity Awareness Month, and it is. And here in Canada, the government of Canada has four four themes, right? And the first week is all about password security. That's right. Coincidence or what? There you go. What is this? <laughs> and, and just for all of you that are out there, we have a free cybersecurity uh, status self-assessment tool. So um, make sure you go to rhino.io slash cybercheck and you can download it for free. There you go. So if you want to be secure, it talks about password protection. It talks about firewalls. It talks about all of those basic things that you need to be aware of in terms of cybersecurity. All right. Andrew, the lines, we are yeah. opening up the lines for you. If you have any questions before I ask the questions, I give you a chance to ask all the questions you have. So just send in our way and Mike will be able to answer. And if he doesn't answer, I will. So all we right. Have a, we, got, we have another hi. We have a howdy actually from Steve. Do we have any questions? Uh, Kai basically says hello. But any, any questions, guys, as of right now? Or are we maybe, Dan, if you want to get the ball rolling. And Let me the open up. Happening? the floor so all right mike what is password hygiene is it like brushing your teeth what what is password hygiene if you yes. can tell people it, it is, i see that that word bouncing around everywhere making sure that you uh take a shower every day you know floss <laughs> your <laughs> teeth while you're brushing yeah i mean it's um the idea of password hygiene is it's a, a long answer but in a short manner i would say it's it's not using the same password for every application and website Right. That's the main thing is that you want to make sure that you don't have the same password for every app, for every website, be it Facebook, Twitter, um, you know, maybe your 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 bank account information, whatever applications you use for work. The biggest thing when it comes to hygiene and poor hygiene is if any time any of those sites get compromised in a data breach, all it takes is a hacker to get your password yeah. and then basically daisy chain that through every other online website or application that you use it with. So yeah, ha the, that's the concept of, 100% to do with that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the concept of uh, pawning, right? Uh, so uh, maybe you can explain that why this pawning when an email gets pawned. Yeah. I, so like, let me, let me kind of, you know, go back to what I'll, I like to refer to as phishing, right? With a, you know, phishing with mm -hmm. a P, not, not the F. Yeah. I'm not going on like Gary right now. Um, but with phishing, you know, the idea there is that some bad actor is is sending out thousands of emails to anybody, anybody who's dumb enough to really click it and open it. But ultimately, it looks like it's coming from a, a reputable source. It might be, you know, um, kind of like looking like it's coming from your admin at your local mm -hmm. company. 
And there it says, hey, I need you to reset your password for this site or for this application. It's been 30 or 90 days since your last password reset. So next thing you know, you click a link and it takes you to a, a website, a landing page that looks like you should reset your password. Yes. You enter your information and next thing you know, you get a 404 error that it didn't work. And uh, that's that's a bad sign because what you just did was you entered your email and password to a bad actor who now has that information is in, is then going to use software to basically uh, see what other websites that he can crack into your information on. So yeah, it's a yeah. big problem, big problem. Yeah. And uh, you know what? It's funny you mentioned uh, phishing because we see as a cybersecurity company, we see that all the time with uh, um, all of our clients. There's right. no one client that hasn't gotten phished or, um, you know, their attempts to, uh, or, or getting fish emails and landing pages and all of that. So there, you know, the cybersecurity awareness training, it's so important for telling people what to do and, and how to notice when you're getting attacked. Right. And, right. and the thing that I was mentioning is spawning too. So I just noticed that, um, I don't know if you know, but uh, you know, uh, Twitch, uh, the big, um, streaming uh, Twitch streaming service got hacked, uh, yesterday and hackers were able to steal usernames and, and, and passwords, right? So, so now your pa your password basically for your email is spawned, which means somebody out there, a big company, got hacked and they were able to obtain passwords for their application. So, those passwords, if you're using the same password for your email and your bank account, make sure that you change your password. So, um, and you don't repeat the same password. Don't duplicate your passwords, right? And, yeah. and that's the main key. And that's what LastPass does. Can you walk us through what LastPass does in terms of gener generating passwords and in, in, uh, in all of that stuff? Do, like yeah, the media scoring me, system? Do you want to answer that, Mike, first? Or do you want me to jump onto a question and come back to that? What would you prefer? Oh, well, let's go to the question and then, and, and and then, then we'll, we'll answer other questions. Yeah. Perfect. So Tamara asks, are browser-based uh, password managers not good enough? If not, why? So Very yeah, Dan, I mean, yeah, you could probably get a little bit more of the specs behind it, but the the answer to your question, uh, Tamara, is don't ever let Google Chrome, you know, remember your passwords. It's highly insecure. And Dan, maybe you can get into a little bit on why. Oh, yes. Oh, absolutely. So there's been a numerous, um, and that's why browsers need to be updating uh, constantly, uh, you know, security updates and, 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 you know, like Chrome, it's been... Uh, part of an attack for the longest time. It continues to get attacked. And and they, they are always uh, um, coming up with new security updates for it for the same reason. It's very, it's it, it can get insecure. And if you have an outdated version of Chrome, um, then people can actually steal your passwords, right? And the other thing is that LastPass is multi- device right so it's not just for google chrome because google chrome has its own password firefox has its own password management safari does their they, they do their own but LastPass works in every single device so if you have a an android device or an ios you know iphone or your you have different devices one at home one here at the office then you can actually lose use uh, LastPass one LastPass account for all of your devices so it's very very convenient right well guys to that to that point and i guess maybe for the people watching i mean let's get real here we all have been crazy busy we ha all have many many different places we put different passwords and we're saying don't remember them all but you're like are you freaking kidding me how am i not supposed to remember them all? how am i going to remember them all so everybody's like just right. you know one thing very easy use it over and over and over again like as a, as a consumer or a business how do I implement, like, how does LastPass help me with this? Or how do, what do I do so I don't have to remember 15 passwords and every single time I log into a different bank account or I go somewhere that I have, it's like, are you freaking kidding me? I forget it all the time. So what, yeah. what does LastPass do for me? Or what do, what do these tools, how do they help me? I would say, Andrew, what, one thing LastPass helps to prevent is writing your passwords down on a notepad or a, or a sticky <laughs> note or a whiteboard. And I know it's a little bit different of, a, of an office atmosphere that most people work in today because of COVID and everything that's happened over the last year and a half. But, you know, the more remote, remote centric workforce, you're still very vulnerable, even if you don't have those same methods. Yeah. So like how LastPass works in a nutshell, right? You have this thing called a password vault and the password vault is your your essential login to every other password 
that you need for any application or website. So you have to technically remember one password to get in your password vault, right? And that one's always going to be encouraged to be about a 20 character password with special characters, <laughs> letters, numbers, you know, the whole lot. But once you have access and logged into your LastPass vault, whenever you go into any application or any other website, there's an autofill feature that will automatically remember those passwords on your behalf. Yes. So all you have to do is click the fill button. It, it puts in your username plus your password associated to that website. And again, you don't have to worry about remembering these. It's remembering it for you. And better yet, the best thing about LastPass is it's a different password for every website. But it's also you have the ability to make a 12 character password, auto generate that you can auto generate a 99 character password and you can My use special characters and anything else. So it's all unique to every single application website that you that you want to sign in for. Does, is, I mean, it's a process for someone who is maybe as, I mean, as, as technical. I mean, obviously, you have your company. It's easy. You have IT people or solutions or support. But as an individual wanting to use it, too, is it a, is it a difference? Is it difficult to actually, you know? install and use or is it a pretty seamless process i'm i'm pretty sure my my elderly parents could easily use it tomorrow you know with a nice. five minute explanation and the okay. cool thing too is like um the user interface is very intuitive um that's that's probably the best thing about LastPass is you can pick up and play with it and understand what the heck it's trying to ask you to do within yes. a matter of minutes and then ultimately the support you know if you don't have like the training and everything else associated you know obviously that's stuff that that log me in slash last pass will provide but all that stuff's already on on YouTube. You know, go to right. YouTube and type in LastPass, mm -hmm. and you'll probably find about a hundred different videos that are about a minute long. Of right. here's how you do this, here's how you do that. It's the it's a very easy, intuitive tool to use. Well, I think Absolutely. that's why I asked the question because I think a lot of people are vulnerable to cybersecurity concerns because they're scared. They just don't have the knowledge, right? Or it's difficult to do certain things. So that's why I asked because I know LastPass yeah. is incredibly seamless, very user friendly. Yep. Um, and I just wanted you to talk to that because I think that's part of yeah. the problem with cybersecurity is, or or the internet, you know, the computers in general, people are scared, so they don't know what to do. So they take the simplest route. Absolutely. And they you know, so yes. we have, we have a question from McGill, Dan. Um, yes. Why does my, la why does my password have to be so complicated? Yeah, well, um, you want to answer that, Mike, or do you want me to go and answer? Yeah, uh, go, go ahead. ahead. Take a stab at it, I'll add to it. <laughs> okay, perfect. So yeah, I mean, uh, that's a that's a really good question. You know, you, it, back in the days, you can have, you know, like very simple qu uh, password five, five characters long and and just, uh, you know, like uh, alphanumeric and, and, uh, and maybe a, a symbol. But nowadays, that's that's not the case. Your password needs to be long and, and complex. And, and funny enough, and this is kind of like the uh, the thing, it, it's not so much about the complexity, it's, it's about really the length of the password. And I'm gonna tell you why. So there's two ways that you can crack a password. The one, the first one that, you know, like hackers love is using a password dictionaries. So password dictionaries, dictionaries are basically really long list of, you know, a million passwords in a, in a text file that they put on in a software program like Hydra or John the Ripper, funny name, John the Ripper. Um, and, they, and they start trying to hammer the application until they they're able to log in right so if you make the password very long and complex that password is never going to be in the in, in the dictionary in the password dictionary right the other thing is like hackers try to uh do uh rainbow tables right so rainbow tables are, are another way of uh, attacking uh, an application and, and it's basically algorithms that try to get guess a hash right so if you make your password very complicated and long then good luck. I mean, there's this really great tool from Kaspersky that checks your password. And as you type in the password, it tells you how how weak or strong it is. And it's funny because if you type in a really long password, it it tells you, oh yeah, this password's never gonna be cracked. It says, you know, 50 centuries to for for that password to be cracked. <laughs> centuries. <laughs> and I'm like, are you kidding me? A bold statement. I don't know. Yeah, that's a bold, that's a bold statement too, right? There, uh, for yeah. Sure. yeah. So that's 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 basically the reason why they have to be yeah. complicated. I'm sorry, that's that's the way it is. Right? I would so Dan, Dan, to add on to, from my perspective, um, just some general again, we'll go back to the word hygiene. Uh, I I 
anybody who's curious, Google right now, hey, that what's the top 10 used passwords or top 15 most used passwords? And they're pretty ridiculous, right? It's pass <laughs> password, password one, password with a, with a zero <laughs> instead of the letter O, um, one, two, three, yes. four, five, six. So like ultimately what hackers do is they, they understand that there's commonly used passwords like Dan had mentioned from the dictionary. And they're going to try to spin that against your username, your email and, and try to get in. So that's why the, the length of the password and the more complex you make it, it's, it's just going to drop off that that list of ever being used before for the most part and then secondly people get into a habit of using like known things to them and everybody understands how vulnerable information <laughs> is like you can go mm -hmm. on anyone's facebook page and figure out when their date of birth was or right. you know depending on how private your profile is you could figure out what their kids names are what their dog's name is and you know with a little bit of uh you know googling you can find out their street address so these are yeah. things that everybody uses everybody uses this yeah, for passwords, right? kids name and then date of birth kids name uh, and then you know your your street address or dog whatever the case and, might be so a hacker have, is actively looking for that dan and they're yeah. gonna they're definitely gonna pin that against you and try to get that as your password too right? that is so funny that uh, that you say that uh, mike because we have a question that it borders around exactly what you're what you're what you're talking about, which is the pass phrases. And, and, and basically the question is from Alexis Ramirez. So thank you for joining us, Alexis. He asks, also I've been hearing about pass phrases. Can you tell us more? Can you tell us more about them? Right, pass phrases and security yeah. questions and things like that. Right. So um, yeah, if you want to talk about that, that would be great. Yeah, so I think passphrases and security questions kind of go hand in hand. Now, you see a lot of companies, a lot of uh, websites are really kind of encouraging passphrases. And ultimately, if you don't know what a passphrase is, it's the ability to put like a four to 10, uh, you know, basically phrase together as your password. Um, so instead of just being, uh, you know, Mike123, it could say something like, my favorite activity to do is golfing. Um, something along those lines, right? You're putting a passphrase <laughs> together. Obviously, that's a bad one because if you look at my Facebook, you can see I'm a golfer, right? <laughs> but as an example, you understand where I'm getting at, right? You can get unique things. You want to you want to put in something unique to you that you don't necessarily uh, put online. Maybe it's, yeah. hey, my favorite ice cream is mint chocolate chip. I don't think many people are going to guess that about me because they don't see me eating ice cream on, on Instagram, Facebook, whatever the case might be. Um, so that's where that passphrase really starts to come into play. Again, yes. you know, I think it's just as just as good if, as as putting a 20, 30, 40 plus special character driven password yeah. that LastPass can auto generate for you. Um, either way, they're both good, good practices. And then when you come yeah. to security questions, Dan, they are important to have. Again, that's information that if somebody was really doing due diligence, they could probably find Absolutely. out to some degree. But again, it's another it's another jump rope that somebody's going to have to get over in order to get to where they want to be. And most hackers are, are going to not necessarily go through those. They're going to get discouraged and go to find an easier target. So always make yeah. sure you have that stuff. And also the coolest thing about LastPass, it's the ability that you can actually store the uh, the the answers to your questions within yes. the passwords too, right? So like every website that you set up, maybe it's your bank account, you can put in the password it generates, but then there's a notes field in which you can type in the answers to the questions because God knows how many times I forgot whatever yeah. I put as my answer or right. I spelled something wrong. So exactly. yeah, it's, it's all important for sure. Yeah, so from a personal level, I hate security questions, okay? I really do because uh, if I'm going to get social engineer, right? And people go to my Facebook account, LinkedIn, and and you know, like I'm, I'm always posting stuff because you know we're we have a company in in the in the in the, and also with my family and stuff like that, right? So, right. so if you have people, are, you know, a security question that says, "What what city were you born in?" or you know, "What's uh, your dog's name?" or or etc. Chances are that some hacker out there is going to be able to guess those uh, those security questions or answers uh just by looking at my profiles and stuff like that exactly. right so yeah, so what i do and which is very smart I, it's, I use LastPass, just like you said mike but instead of answering with security answers or sec the security an answers with with the actual appropriate you know like what city i was born in i put a password in there <laughs> so i i create a 10 a 10 digit password and then when it asks then I put a password in all three or four or whatever uh, mm -hmm. security questions they have. And this is especially true for banking. Banking is really bad for multi-factor authentication. They always have the, the security questions, and yeah, I don't know why, right? <laughs> so right. that's that's something that that I do. Uh, Gladstone, do we have any, any other questions, comments from people out there? 
This we have a couple of long ones in here, I see. All right, Tamara, she's asking, yeah. uh, how often should you change your password? Your password. Yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of going to be a question or an answer, I should say, derived from your company policy. So, you know, everybody kind of yeah. has a different theory on that. So obviously ask the right question to the right people. Um, you know, there there's the idea that with LastPass, if you have special driven uh, characters unique to every website, that you don't need to change it unless there was a data breach to that website. Right. Um, right. Some companies are going to require you to change passwords every 30 days. So there's kind of a varying answer there. But ultimately, I would say, think about it this way. One thing that LastPass also provides is uh, dark web monitoring. So mm. basically what happens is if you have a account on a website um, that is part of a recent hack and, and that information is for selling the dark web, you actually get an email notification as does your admin to the site as well, um, right. saying that your email has been associated with maybe it's yes. amazon.com i know they've been hacked but either way like yahoo is a good example from like yeah. one, seven years ago right there was three billion accounts that got hacked. Yeah, so absolutely. in that case yep. yahoo you would got hacked so like yes go and change that Crazy. as fast as possible right so yeah. like you would get the notification from LastPass. your admin would probably hit you up as well and at that point in time as quickly as possible let's go in and make that adjustment that change and yep. LastPass, it's pretty cool all you have to do is click on the on the Yahoo password and it takes you right to the change password site within Yahoo. And then you can just auto generate and save it to both LastPass and Yahoo immediately. So it's very intuitive. Very, very nice. So the, the other thing is uh, um, hygiene, right? Password hygiene. So a trick that I usually do is like on my birthday, I usually change passwords, right? So I can rotate my passwords uh, on a date that I remember. Great. And you just you just told yeah. all the hackers that that's when you change it. So they're going to be looking at your computer that day. Hey, it, <laughs> might, it might be for, for <laughs> Thanksgiving. <laughs> um, the, other, the other thing, Mike, did you know that there is a password day? Yeah, National Password Day. Of course I knew that. National I Password that. Day. I, did, I didn't know that. Yeah, May the 6th. International it, Password Day, yes. Yeah, international they password. Should have made it May, they should have made it May fourth, and then the fourth, you know, May fourth. You know, <laughs> May the fourth be with you. May the fourth, and the password be with you. With you, so it makes sense. I didn't know that. Yeah, that is uh, that, that's crazy. All right, so any other questions uh, out there? I'm, I'm liking this. I'm liking this. So Aura says, "Hello, guys. Uh, why do I have to change my password so much? Part, do you part have of to change the password so much?" Again, I would say, you know, every every yeah. company has a different philosophy. Um, you can go and look at like CMMC guidelines and this guidelines and and then double check it with your IT director and you could get five different answers. So, yeah. you know, if you are changing it every 30 days, it's most likely a company policy. Again, I, I would say, you know, like like uh, Dan mentioned, he does it about once a year. Good, good process, good hygiene, good habits. Yes. Ultimately, if you have a separate password for every application, you know, you're going to be in a safe spot unless that information is then compromised. Then that's right. that point where you want to get triggered to yeah. change it. But every company well, has different policies. Yeah. And Aura, uh, just so you know, I have something better than just changing the password all the time. It's called multi-factor authentication, right? So in, in, in the, the premise of multi-factor authentication is that you have two touch points to enter an account, right? So it's, you type in your password right? Your normal password. And let's say you never change your password. You're like, okay, screw it. I'm not going to change. It. And you type it in. As soon as you type it in, then it will give you, or that application will give you another slot where you have to type in your multi-factor authentication, which could be Google Authenticator or LastPass Authenticator, because LastPass also comes with an authenticator, by the way. Nice. Yeah. Um, or something like, for example, um, you know, like a, a Microsoft Hello, visual recognition, they have OTP, which is the uh, one-time passwords, which is basically a text message that you get on your phone that you have to type in a, a number from your phone into the screen. So there's so many ways that nowadays applications are making uh, making it easier for, for the user uh, to be able to log in um, and uh, for the hackers harder to, to be able to steal your password right so so even if you're if you're like oh why do i have to change my password so much um you don't really have to if you even if you do it once a year but you use multi-factor authentication for that particular app i think the key is don't have the same password for everything that that, right. that is the main key wouldn't you agree mike yeah actually LastPass will give you a what we call our security score 
Um, so the security score, all it does is it, it basically combs your, your last pass vault to see how many times you reuse the same password. And it's on a scale of zero to a hundred. So, you know, if you, you, if you reuse the same password on 70% of the websites, guess what? Your secure is, your security score is about a 30 and that's really, really bad. So you have the ability to kind of like do a self check and monitoring. Uh, let's make sure that as much as we can, let's try to not duplicate these passwords, especially for the websites that matter, right? Um, yes. the ones that have important data, you know, if, if you signed up for some shopping website 10 years ago and you never signed back in, ultimately that's not going to get you too bad. But yeah, for like your bank account information and everything else that you find extremely pertinent, those are the ones you want to make sure you absolutely have the separate passwords for. Yeah, absolutely. And, guys, and like, Andrew. I was just going to say, guys, everybody who's watching, I mean, we're as, as you know, human beings, we like to procrastinate. This is not something you want to procrastinate. You need to be proactive, not yes. reactive, because when right. you're reactive, it's too late. And, and I can't emphasize that enough. So we need to be, you know, if you've been putting it off and putting it off, you're scared to do it. LastPass is an incredible tool. Again, be proactive, not reactive, because reactive when, when you are hacked, you can't even imagine the obstacles you're going to have to overcome to get back on track. And it's not, it's not something anybody wants to go through. So please, Absolutely. please be proactive. Right. Um, and I know you were going to ask me something, Dad, but we have another message here too. But I just want to ask me the question first. Are you good? No, no, ask the question. Oh, right okay, ahead. perfect. Yeah, so absolutely. Andrew, Andrew Zwart, does LastPath with auth um, Authenticator automatically take care of MFA and password in one step when I sign in? Wow, good question. Yeah. So the answer is yes, right? Um, that's the important part. So the cool thing about LastPass is it's not just a password manager. MFA is a component as is uh, single sign-on applications as well. So the way that this all ties in together is you could have the MFA component be active on your initial sign-in of your password vault. Um, you could have it actually set up every time you sign into your desktop. You could have it sign up uh, every time you sign into a VPN. You could have it sign into every other application that's in our uh, 1200 oh, uh, app yeah. catalog, right? So the idea there is that if if you as an organization might use ADP or maybe Workday for HR uh, applications, mm -hmm. if you want to have your employees use LastPass and then they have to MFA to get into those websites, ultimately you have the ability for them to just click the logo for ADP. And then it takes them into the ADP website based upon a push notification on their cell phone that says mm -hmm. you have to have a biometric scan to get into this website. So um, it all ties in together. It's, it's all under the same uh, pane of glass, which as IT goes, you know, that's not something that is the most common. <laughs> so having the ability to kind of check all three of those boxes off in one solution, it's, it's very uh, obviously uh, beneficial. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, you're talking about single sign on. So for those of you who have, uh, you know, make the purchase decisions uh, out there, uh, the single sign on uh, with pass, uh, last pass is cheaper than than uh, most I, of I the uh, competitors. I, did, I didn't hear that. What did you say? Cheaper. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, it's <laughs> cheaper. So if you More have a lot of <laughs> huh? More cost effective. Yeah, more that's, that's cost effective, it. cost effective and efficient. So um, exactly. the if you have a lot of users, right? You know, like if you're if you have like a thousand users on your on your network that need a, a single sign on, it can get really expensive if you if you're using the other the other applications. But LastPass just came out with their single sign on not too long ago, and it works flawlessly. So take it from me, it works, right? Beautiful. There you go. Any other questions? Let's see. Gabriella, what are the top password security risks? Yeah, the risk of your information, you know, you know, it's, um, <laughs> it's, it's, I, honestly, Gabriella, I hit on this a little bit ago, but it's, you know, you just want to make sure that it's unique to you and, and, and else also that it's not information that can be found online about you. Um, yeah. that's nine times out of 10, if somebody does get hacked, it's either from a dark web purchase of credentials that, you know, that that's something the hacker can never guess or put into a software to guess for them. Um, but the, the, the biggest, uh, you know, I guess we'll call it vulnerability is just using the, the common passwords like, you know, the ones I had mentioned earlier and or things that are associated with your life. And I, what I mean by that is family, pets, yes. uh, birthdays, yeah. addresses, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Basically, basically, I mean, I, I don't know if this helps a little bit, Gabriel, but hackers are opportunistic. Right. And so if you don't have good password hygiene, you're not doing all the right things. Again, being lazy or being pro procrastinating by by being, you know, not protected or, or being very out there so people can hack you. Uh, anything and everything is basically at risk at that point. So, you know, the hygiene, the passwords, 
you know, basically being informed and educated is going to help protect you. So, you know, what are the top password security risks? It's again, back to, you know, opportunistic, because that's what they're looking for. They're yes. looking for an easy way in, as much information, and then they'll apply it when and where they can. Is really yeah. the, the Yes. Yes, and and I mention it all the time, but cybersecurity is like a it's like an onion, right? So LastPass is one layer of the uh, of the onion, but you have so many other layers. And just since we're on that subject, I'm gonna I'm gonna just bring it in. Um, go to rhino.io/cybercheck, right? And then you can actually download our free cybersecurity status self assessment uh, questionnaire right from that page and it will give you a lot of really good insights into what you're currently doing right now and what your status is if you're low medium or high level uh security risk just download it and uh, and send it to us we'll be able to help you out with that as well right so amazing amazing Absolutely. any other questions out there not not that I see yet. Dan, I just want to compliment on our background today. I, I love it. It's very, very vibrant and cool. I'm not sure if this, this is a little if this is a little hacker over here with his hood on or not, but I love it. It's it's very uh, very cool background today. It's it's neon uh, inspire, um, um, right? So Tron 1990s. Uh, I like it. Very yeah, cool. like that kind of stuff. <laughs> All right. So I have a, a couple of questions on my own as well. If uh, um, that yeah, I, so that go, I can go, ask. Go ahead. Fire away. Oh, I have. There's one here from Andrew. If you don't want to, if you want to answer that first. Oh, let's see. Oh, we get we got a few. All right. Which one are we gonna put up? There we go. Andrew. Go All right. Dan, Dan, go ahead and read that one out. Okay, password management and MFA are essential for sure. Yep. But I've heard several times that dark web monitoring is really not that valuable. What are your thoughts? Uh, I would say everything's valuable to a certain degree, right? Okay. And, and and with that said, yes, at the end of the day, dark web monitoring is the ability for you to just to have awareness that mm -hmm. your information is out there. Otherwise, if you didn't have it, you wouldn't know, right? And there's several ways, like everybody who's not a LastPass password or LastPass uh, partner today, go to Have You Been Pwned? And just Google Have You Been Pwned? That's P-W-N-E-D, I believe, Dan. Um, yes. But either way. Um, it'll run a quick search on your personal email, your work email, whatever yeah. you want. It'll show you everything that you've been associated with a hack on. Um, so it's kind of uh, scary in a way. And I'll tell a story here because before That's the good. the company that I came before, uh, before LastPass, I, I used to work with all kinds of security products and, and dark web scanning was a component of that where we would run an email domain based on an entire company and it would show all results from everybody associated with that email do email domain and all different hacks and it would give you the date of the breach mm -hmm. the passwords everything you needed wow. to know and i was doing a live call with one of my sales engineers that was running it live for one of the clients that was bringing on board and this gentleman who owned a big msp you know probably a 10 million dollar msp which is uh, a big one in our industry yeah, uh I could see his face get red. I could see his uh, almost reddish pale because he was embarrassed how many times his information was on there and how poor his password hygiene was. He used the same password for everything. And there was about 12 different breaches on there as well to the point where wow. he actually stopped the conversation, asked for a minute, picked up the phone, called his wife and asked her to change the bank account information immediately. Wow. Um, so that's, that's, that's the importance of dark web monitoring is just having awareness that the chances of a, a bad actor purchasing those credentials might be low, yep. but you never know. They're you still know. out there to be purchased and be used at any point in time. So, you yep. know, to circle back, that's why you just, it, it's a, as, as a part of Dan's onion, that's just a layer of security that you should probably have. Yeah. Of. I, I have something to say about that, Andrew, and, and, and I'm sorry to tell you that it is very important. Uh, that web monitoring is important because as an ethical hacker, um, we use uh, what's called uh, dark dump, right? Which is a Kali, it's a search, uh, uh, a deep search um, uh, dark web tool using your terminal on Kali Linux, right? Which is the, it, the pen testing tool that we use or OS Linux, Linux uh, distribution. And we use dark dump to compile information about people, organizations, and all of that when we're doing pen testing. And you should, you, <laughs> You should see the amount of data that we can get from organizations and individuals inside of that organization, right? Yeah. Using using this tool. So, um, if your stuff is out there, 
you want to make sure that it that is uh, you stop it as, uh, as as soon as possible, right? Especially Absolutely. as you said, Mike, the 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 fact that people get pwned all the time. Twitch, if you have an account with Twitch right now, which happened yesterday, make sure you change your passwords because they your your, your information is probably pawned already, right? So wow. that that to answer from from a technical perspective, pen pen testing perspective, I can give you that insight in there. That's great. Thanks for the question, Andrew. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, so from Tamara, uh, does LastPass proactively tell me if my login has been compromised in a data breach, in data breaches? So Tamara, that's a pretty yep. simple one. As long as LastPass, as long as you have that website associated to your LastPass account. So let's just say, for example, Facebook got um, hacked and, and everything was on the dark web at that point. As long as you had your Facebook uh, password remembered within LastPass, you would get an email notification from LastPass saying that your email has been associated with the breach and that gives you the details on it as well. Yes, and uh, it, that is not really uh, you know, far-fetched. You, we know that we, um, you know, the Facebook went down for an entire day a couple of days ago, right? Day, so yeah, right. what are the chances that they might get hacked? You never know, right? Never so that's, that's, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's a different topic for another show, but yeah, it was let's funny. Not go down, let's not go down that wormhole, please. <laughs> no. Okay, any, any other questions? Yeah, here we go. Uh, Adrian, um, hey guys, what about security questions for password recovery? Any tips on that? Yeah, I like Dan's uh, method actually. Dan, do you want to kind of just go a quick rundown of how One you more manage time. this? Yeah. Yes. So what I do is I I get a subscription of LastPass. So that's the first thing you have to do, Adrian. Go to lastpass.com or just contact us and we'll give you a subscription. We get better pricing because we are oh, actually vendors uh, from uh, of uh, LastPass. So um, you can contact me or contact uh, any of us um, and we'll be able to uh, uh, walk you through the process. But basically what I do is um, in LastPass, you have the option of adding notes, like secure notes where you can upload information also like text files and things like that. But however, in you can do it through the notes or you can do it right through the password. When you set up a password and the application asks you for the security uh, questions or answers, Instead of uh, adding, you know, like where were you born and you put the city in there, you just create, you auto create a, a password and then just put it in there in the little widget that it gives you and then just save it. And then that, that way you have your, 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 uh, your security or your recovery right at your fingertips without having to remember, oh man, what was my, my, my wife's uh, brother's dog's name? You know what I mean? So it's, uh, it, it's so convenient. I use it all the time. I hope that helps. Absolutely. Any other questions? Nothing yet popped up. Dan, did you have any more? I do. I do. I, hold on. Give me one second. Just uh, to remind you guys, we are live every Friday at 12 o'clock on LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook next week. Just to let you know, we're going to be talking about uh, uh, the 10 do's and don'ts of stack augmentation. Right, so it's going to be Andrew Summerton, Gladstone, Niyama Sepor, and your stroly Dan Duran next week. So just remember, and just so you know, if you have any questions and you don't know the status of your cybersecurity in your company, download. Go to the rhino.io/cybercheck, and you'll be able to download our free assessment tool that you can use, and you can actually measure the uh, risk uh, that you have in your company from medium, low or high, right? Yeah. So those are a couple of things that I want to remind you on. And what, what I wanted to talk about really, Andrew, is tell us your story with one of your family members and what happened that one day where we got oh, a yeah. call from him desperate. Yeah. So, and so, we're talking about hundreds of thousands yeah. of dollars. What? Yes. Yeah, I, 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 won't, I won't share who it is or what it is, but a, a very close family member of mine was is, is quite high up in an organization. Um, but he had left the organization, he actually sold the company. He was one of the owners and he sold the company. Um, but his information and his criteria and his, his all his logistics were still associated with that company, which is which is kind of weird. Um, but an email was sent out that him, because he was still affiliated somehow or another, went out requesting um, some money to be transferred. If I remember correctly, Dex, I know you fixed it. It was either money to be transferred or he requested money um, to be sent to him directly mm -hmm. through this account. 
Um, and he's like, no, absolutely not. Now, fortunately, because of, of his experience and his banking partnership, that the bank manager actually called him directly and said, what's going on, Paul? Is this true? Is this actually happening? Um, and and um, fortunately, he said no. The reality of it, though, was if he didn't have that relationship, that transaction could have happened and obviously would have been out quite a few hundred thousands of dollars. And the funny thing about it is um, it was it actually kind of made sense. Like, so it was social engineering, I'm assuming, because there was a lot of a lot of work went into him, his information, the affiliated with the company. And then there was this this email that you know connected the dots. So fortunately, because of our relationship with him, he reached out to us. And then, Dan, if you want to maybe just finish the, the, the story. But yeah, it was, I mean, this didn't, what, maybe two years ago this happened. And it was it was yes. pretty intense. He was a little scared by it. Yeah, yeah. And then we, we had to go in uh, and um, uh, funny enough, we created a LastPass account for him. Right. And, uh, and we uh, in, installed other like, you know, like um, antivirus and EDR uh, endpoint uh, detection and response and all of that on his uh, his account. And he's uh, he's a happy camper now. Right. So. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that, that. That was a very scary story. And I just want to let you know that LastPass is also free. Yeah, it is free. Versions. Yeah, yeah there is a couple versions. of versions of LastPass that is free. Uh, for live, right? That you can just download and install. So if you want to try, give it a try. Just uh, go in and uh, and uh, get a copy of LastPass for highly yourself, re- right? Highly recommend it, guys. Anybody out there, don't procrastinate. Do it, please. Yep. It's 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 again. You don't want to experience being hacked. Yeah, Dan. I uh, I would say don't wait. You know, if your business is looking at implementing it, um, you know, budgets are always a thing and timelines and everything else. But you could go right now to lastpass.com, sign up for a personal account. It's free. Um, it's it's obviously a bit more limited than the business versions, but it's yes. it still gives you the ability to save and uh, secure and generate secure passwords uh, all on a Chrome browser, Safari browser, whatever you use. There's about ten of them you can pick from, right? So, um, yeah, go ahead and go to lastpass.com. Look at the the free version of it get used to it. And then ultimately the cool part here, guys, is that if your business does go ahead and implement it from the business standpoint, you can actually link your personal information to your new yeah. business account. And it's nice. super easy to do as well. So like all you have to do is just sync it up with your new business account and your personal information will have its own folder within your business account. So that yeah. information transfers over. And then, you know, it's not uncommon and we don't like to have it happen, but you know what? People leave organizations as well. So if yeah. you ever chose to leave an organization, whatever the case is, you know, you actually have the ability to de- desync that personal account from the business account and the admin would do that for you. But that yeah. information will travel with you wherever you go. You always exactly. have the ability to carry that 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 personal account as well. Yeah, and and you know that the 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 good thing is that um, the admins that are using LastPass or you know, your organization's admin doesn't have access to your personal account, so they won't be able to see your passwords and the stuff that you're logging in um, and and all of that. So it's kept separately. But the other thing that I want to mention is that unfortunately, you know, we all kick the bucket, right? So and uh, at, at one point or another. But what happens, for example, if one of us passes away, right? So what happens to everything, all my accounts, all the stuff that I have, uh, who is going to be able to access it if it's secure and I'm, you know, departing the, uh, the this world with my passwords in, in LastPass, right? So, or myself, uh, in, in, in LastPass has this legacy um, part where you can actually create an account for somebody, uh, a friend, a loved one, where if you ever pass away, um, you know, uh, because of those things in life, um, they can recover all of your accounts and stuff like that through through their legacy part of LastPass, right? So in the personal account, which is which is fabulous, right? So th- that's something to know. Uh, if people don't know about that, you know, like it's it's another it's another good thing to have, um, you know, LastPass by your side, right? And Dan, if I could, the uh, the LastPass personal. Um, again, it's the free version. Now, the biggest limitation to it is that you can't share passwords with anyone else. So that information yes. is pertinent to only you and your computer, basically, um, and or your phone. So just to let you know that if you guys go down the route of reaching out to Rhino or going directly to LastPass, um, every business license, which is the basically what we call our enterprise license, um, every one of these business licenses will also give you what we call a free families account. 
Yes. Um, so family's account is the, the better version of your free account because you can share it with a spouse. You can share it with right. children. You can share it with an aunt and uncle, grandparents. It doesn't matter. You have up to five different email accounts that you could split on your family account. And trust me, it comes really important whenever somebody tries to remember what the Netflix password was or, <laughs> hey, hey, you know, I, I say, hey, wife, uh, what is the credit card number? Oh, yeah. don't worry about it. It's in LastPass. It can autofill into your into your browser. So, yeah, that's right. all an added bonus as well. Which, which is great. Absolutely. Another yeah. question from Ant Andrew. We have another question. Uh, Dan, oh, I'll, I'll read it to you, Dan. This is directed to you. You mentioned browser security. Do you have a preference between Firefox and Chrome? Oh, <laughs> that's a, that's kind of like, uh, wow. Uh, do you like Mercedes or BMW? Which one or, or you know, uh, Toyota or Honda? Which one is better? Right. So it really depends on the person. But in terms of security, I like I like Firefox a bit better um, just because they have this uh, uh, built in anti tracking in there. So you don't I don't have to um, bring in uh, things like uh, uh, Adblocks Plus, for example, which is a, a free ad blocking extension that you have to add to Chrome. So um, Firefox has it automatically, right? So in terms of security, they're both very secure they're both um, happy, yeah. also because there are always updates, security updates on both. Uh, so yeah, so that's my my preference is Firefox because I'm, I'm kind of like a open source community type of guy, right? So I, I love Linux. I, I love everything that has to do with the, with the uh, you know, um, open source and Firefox. Uh, Mozilla Firefox is, uh, is one of those applications. That's But that's personal, right? So yeah, any other questions? We're almost running out of time here. Coming to the end, eh? Absolutely. It's gone quickly. Very informative. Guys, don't procrastinate. You know, obviously, this show is all about you. It's all about LastPass. It's all about being informed. We certainly, this is not a, you know, us telling you to go out and buy something you don't need. This is something, as, as you know, Mike said, there's a free service out there. Go try yeah. it. Get protected. Yeah. You know, get informed. We offer, you know, some free cybersecurity awareness options. Dan shared that a few times. He don't hesitate. Call us as a small to mid-sized business. We'd love to talk to you about your security, where you are, your your footprint. And, you know, again, a conversation is free, guys. We want to make sure we can help you. And that's the whole premise of this show. Um, yes. Yeah. So as part of our, our um, you know, cybersecurity uh, mandate, basically, if I may say that, uh, we include LastPass in all of our offerings. So if, if uh, we are onboarding, being onboarded by one of our clients, LastPass is by default uh, part of the package that we offer our clients because, <laughs> you know, like you need to be secure in all from all sides. And LastPass is just one of them, right? So cybersecurity, when it's training, all the technical stuff, uh, reinforcing the, the servers, uh, you know, like vulnerability assessments and, and penetration testing. And then, um, you know, like LastPass is just one of them, right? So next week, we have the 10 do's and don'ts of staff staff augmentation. Uh, I, somebody was asking me, what the heck is staff <laughs> augmentation? <laughs> so, yeah, there is a couple of two terms, right? Offshoring and staff augmentation. What, what are they? It's basically hiring people uh, from another company, right? To be able to work at, in your own company with Andrew Summerton, Gladstone, the Amazon Poor, and your strolly Dan Duran. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much, Mike, for being part of our show. Yeah, and, thanks, uh, thanks for having me, guys. This was great fun. I'm, I'm glad that we had a chance to at least bring some more awareness about password management, password hygiene, and, and MFA, SSO, everything that's all kind of been, you know, accumulated within LastPass. So had a great time absolutely. talking about it. Really, thanks so if much. you have any questions, go to rhino.io um, and... Um, you'll be able to uh, uh we'll be able to answer all of your questions uh, right there uh you can you can reach out i'm just looking at gladstone putting stuff through i think they, they elizabeth said some mention in something in there I, I i couldn't really see it but uh gladstone is 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 doing that yeah it so she's saying <laughs> last pass is a great tool for sure thank you for the great information awesome awesome thank you elizabeth uh, for being part of our show and next time, next Friday, live on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube, Friday, 12 o'clock. Don't miss it. See you, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thanks again, Mike. Thanks, Steve.